Okay, this is another one of those ones that'll take two potter's journals. I am making, okay, one and one half pound, three and five pounds. And, um, starting by rolling a walnut size lump of clay um, for the one and one half pounds. Um, okay, and this is just one of those ones that takes time and patience. For the ears, okay, and that's six little walnut sized balls for the ears and for the feet. And for the ears, I flatten one side to push into the pot. And then, see, give them a pinch to give them a little curve. Um, okay, with uh, one side pushed in a little bit and the other going the other way. So I start to form these a little bit before putting it on the pot. needs to be stiff enough so that um, when you push in, you don't lose the shape. And actually, this is going to take time that I cover these really well. I'm lucky they didn't dry out. Um, I think they've been here now for a couple of weeks. Um, so I cover them really wet. And fortunately, they didn't dry out. Okay, and then it's flattened, so it goes on there um, pretty easily. And that might be a little bit big, so as we push this on here, the thumb pushing in, um, we might then remove some of this clay um, by coming down the same way you do when you're doing the dovetail handle on a mug, and we'll actually pinch some of the clay away. And then in between the two ears, I don't necessarily pinch it, but I let it come together and sometimes even building up a thin layer on the pot. And then do that same technique that you do. Okay, yeah, look at that. Like on a um, dovetail handle on a mug. Um, we will smooth that out and lose that though here in a minute. Okay, and just cut off the extra bit we need. Okay, and then, yeah, the back of the ear gets rounded. Okay, one nice clean sweep with the thumb. And then just continue to shape it. Okay, so I'm only making what? Six, seven, eight. Now I'm only making ten of these. But you need to make sure you've got the time to assemble them all because this does take some time. Okay, like the face mugs and the face jugs, um, I do like them a little better. These guys, I <clears throat> a little bit cartoon-like, um, as opposed to the folk art-like. Maybe that's my pro fault by not having the design worked out, so I'll have to keep working on this. Okay, <clears throat> and now... I stretch these ears out. Okay, a little bit like you're making a handle, a mug handle. I'm using the thumb to get a push in on the face side of the ear and then rounding, smoothing off the sides. Okay, so, yeah, they look Easter Bunny-like, although we're getting ready for a Christmas holiday sale. But then I do a pinch-in, 
and that gives it that pig ear curve. Now I don't know that for sure. This is a Christmas tree farm and nursery. I don't have any animals, so I've never seen a pig up close or uh, on a regular basis. But um, it seems to work. Yeah. Okay, and then I did leave a couple rough spots back here that we will get with the rib and a light brush with the sponge. We don't want to overdo it and bring out a lot of the grog. <clears throat> okay. I did these uh, my first year back to clay. I did uh, and I did the eyes, little teeny round ball, um, the first time with the same color clay as the pot. This time I have changed it over to the white clay for the eye. So a little teeny ball, give it a pinch, and you know what? It's a little dry and it's splitting, so you just have to work with that. And um, when I did these, uh, yeah, my first year back to working with, um, or making pottery, um, I did put um, some detailed notes on how I did the little ball, made it a cone for the ears, the tail, a coil, and the eyes. I didn't leave any note for the feet. Okay. Okay, a couple of eyes placed on there. Push them in with the thumb. Okay, see that they look like they're placed like eyes. And taking the needle. since the clay did split a little bit. I'm cleaning that up now. Giving that a little better push on. Okay, so eyes and next the feet. And the slip. So, this is just a jug. I'll put a link to me throwing a jug somewhere since I'm doing a series of 101 jugs, all of them di different. I think I've thrown a jug before. But even that has taken me some time to perfect, perfect and master. Okay, so I am just first placing these loosely on there and then okay, adjusting them. Over and then the front feet. So just a jug. Okay, with feet and ears, tail, and a mouth added. I do cut a slot in here. This is a traditional bank, historically accurate, um, not a modern one with a rubber stopper. There, uh, the money, any of them, any money that goes in the hole that I'll cut in the back will come out of that hole too. And. Um, A lot of the older, more traditional banks are like that without... Uh, yeah, you've seen it in the movies when the kid gets a hammer and busts the thing open. Um, if somebody's buying this, well, I don't know, and they're going to fill it with money, they're not going to be able to save much anyway. Uh, 
Okay, so these feet, I am just pushing on with the thumb and rounding it into the body of the pot. And this just takes time. Um, some of the uh, early banks, um, I think maybe 15th century there about more or less. Okay, and then to get the other side, <laughs> At first, I was doing it with the other hand, but since I'm yeah right-handed, realized I need to turn him over, the uh, upside down now, and do the same thing, the same hand mo movement. So I think uh, yeah, 15th century thereabout, um, a bank made to hold and put coins was just simply a jug. Um, maybe a little wider, shorter, and stouter with a line carved in, and with this part closed off completely. Um, no handle, a slot put in for the money, um, no hole to get it out other than the hole that it went in through. And I believe they were called pig banks. P-Y-G-G. -G. Okay, and... Um, it meaning um, a type of earthenware clay. And I think there's some question on language as to when pig became pig and pig became pig. So at some point, uh, yeah, Banks, I should move that out of the way. I don't want to bang his ear into that. And interesting enough, somewhere in the East, and a different language, um, the word uh, wild boar also was used um, with banks and saving money. I think uh, Mexico has a real tradition of uh, maybe in the late 1800s, early 1900s, um, of banks being not just pigs but all different, made out of clay, and pigs but um, all different animals. And it was, I think, a collector thing. I did these years ago. I didn't do a lot of these. I think I did a few of these years ago when I was making pottery. And I did about a half a dozen when I returned to this in 2017. Um, they sat around. Nobody bought them. I took them to a number of shows. And then finally, <laughs> they all went at once. So I think most of them went to one person. Okay, yeah, once we get those on there, we'll see how he stands up. Um, I've also wet my hands and actually stretched them out and made them a little bit bigger. Um, not so, yeah, we want to get them away from being that little walnut lump of clay. And um, a twist back and forth, <laughs> maybe like we're centering a pot on the wheel and pushing in to cone it up. Okay, but the way my hand fits it, we then have to turn it the other way and get the other side. So this is, yeah, it's long been pushed into the pot. This is um, giving it some shape, mostly. Okay, and I think this style's fairly similar to the, and, and sometimes made, um, in the Carolinas and uh, Seagrove. And, um, hmm. I don't want to overdo this either and bring out too much of the grog. Okay. 
I will let these dry out a bit before I cut the money slot. And let's see, there's still the tail. Um, okay, give him, I like the front to be a little bit taller. Okay, so I'm getting ready for a holiday sale. I thought this would be nice to add to it. Um, I have made a few jug banks um, I, in my 101 jug series. Okay, so carrot shaped coil for the tail. And let's see. And this seems to be going a little faster now. Always getting started is the hand hard part um, until you work out the details. Okay, this one's tail is going the other way compared to the last ones. I believe they have a curl for a pig, and I guess they can curl the other way. Okay, so slip. Okay, I've been lifting the curl firmly attaching the top part and then giving the bottom a light push in and then bringing the curl over pushing that on okay and there we go pig banks p i g g not the terracotta clay p y g g Okay, and this one has, yeah, some attitude to him, so um, he's leaning and looking one way. <laughs> All right, so we are making some progress. The first time I did these, they were very um, straight, up and down. This one, uh, yeah, has uh, got a sideways lean look and attitude. So, I guess if I did a hundred of these, yeah, maybe we'd get somewhere when developing the... the shape, form, and style, like anything else with clay.